I think we're live. What's going on, everyone? Let's get everything finished setting up. I had to put the little man down. So I'm trying to get everything squared away. Ooh, today was a red day. Oh, we had some green in the after hours. That's nice to see. Yeah, that was that was a nasty day. That was nasty. Oh, where's that? Where's that? My chat's broke. There we go. We should be good to go now. Should be good to go now. How's everybody doing tonight? How is everybody doing tonight? Everything, can you hear me okay? Everything flowing good? Everything sound good, look good. Changed up some stuff a little bit. Added the logo. Added the logo for sure. Had, had to slap that bad boy in there. Had to get it going. Man, I tell you guys what. So I'm going to kick it off today kind of talking a little bit about, you know, some of the expectations, some of the things we saw today, some of uh, some of the red we really saw today. So guys, obviously it is Friday. Um, and often Fridays tend to be red days. Just, I mean, there obviously there's nothing that states that Fridays are going to be red every day or excuse me, every week. But Red days typically happen on Fridays because they're going into a weekend. In this case, we're going into a long weekend. We're going into a holiday weekend where it's going to be three days. Um, and then obviously when you have people who are vocally discussing about shorting things um, and, and you know going against stocks, things like this tend to happen. These are days where you approach it as, hey, I'm going to look at it from a positive anyways. I'm going to look at it as buying opportunities. I'm gonna look at it as ways to find stocks that I I've, I've been wanting either to get in or you know some things that I've had on my watch list for a little bit. Making sure you're looking at you know 52 week highs, 52 week lows, understanding the chart, really understanding what you're looking at, doing your homework, doing your due diligence, and these are the days you capitalize on. Um, yeah, you know I was down I think six percent, maybe seven percent today, um, but that also comes off of you know, multiple days of last week and this week where I was up like anywhere from 15 to 22%. So guys, you have to be appreciative of the red days. You know, today was definitely a bloody, bloody day, but that's exactly, you know, those are going to happen. We have those in the market. So I just wanted to get that out, come out and, and really kind of just uh, start off the live stream with that. Young, what is going on, my friend? Nora, Samuel, Sam, what is going on, guys? What is going on? Nora, glad you're here at the very beginning of the stream. I know typically you're working, so I appreciate you swinging in and being a part of the beginning of the stream. It means a ton. It means a ton. Yeah, you know, some people did have good days. Uh, you know, I, I was kind of mostly speaking from my perspective. You know, obviously, those who are involved with CCIV, you guys had a tremendous day. You truly had a um, phenomenal day. I am not a part of CCIV. Um, I have a lot of my funds, a lot of my money tied up into a lot of different stocks. So, you know, I just have not had the opportunity to even pursue CCIV at the moment. But I know a ton of people are. And, you know, I I hope for the best. 
You know, I, I do think that there's a really, really good chance it's going to end up being Lucid. You know, I did create a video that was kind of a different perspective. Um, but it, it really, I think, majority of the information I provided was put pressure on CCIV, not me personally, but people who wrote the articles. Uh, we, you know, we see people put hit pieces out all the time. Um, we obviously see people put bearish articles out all the time. And I think that's kind of the articles that I really presented in that video. I think that's what they were saying. Um, is there a chance Chamath was going to get, you know, lucid? There was always possibly a chance, but, you know, that's just how it happens. Darren, what is going on? Duckster swinging in. Guys, the uh, I'm enjoying seeing everybody get in here. Let's go. Let's go. Holy smokes, guys. Ag freaking eagle. UAVS, the eagle is soaring. Now, as soon as I saw... You know, someone call in on Jim Cramer's show. They called in and uh, they asked about, you know, UAVS. And just set that aside, guys. They popped the chart up and he he said a little bit of positive things, but then he said a little bit of negative things. And, of course, then he bounces off and says that he prefers Honeywell. Okay, cool. It's the fact that he still had UAVS, Ag Eagle, on his show, and that's going to bring awareness. Of course, everyone starts talking about it on social medias. It is absolutely phenomenal. Could not be more excited. And, uh, you know, the Eagle is going to fly on Tuesday. I immediately was like, man, is it Tuesday? Let's go. Let's go. What's up, Sam? So, yeah, I, I could not. And then, obviously, it started popping up in the Discord. And everyone in the Discord was like, man, you know, Jim Cramer just chatted out or just mentioned Ag Eagle. Had me fired up. Had me real fired up. Holy smokes, Duxter. Well, you know, I hope I hope for the best. You guys will be all right. You know, there it's just something you got to get through. You'll be good. You'll be good. You will be good. You got a lot of support from this channel too, Duxter. So, we wish for you to have the, you know, have the best and you'll get through it, man. You'll get through it for sure. You will get through it. Uh-oh. Man, I tell you guys, there was a there was a lot of things going on. A lot of things going on. The drone market, guys, is starting to starting to become, you know, pick up some relevancy, really starting to pick up a lot of traction. You know, Dragonfly is doing some amazing things. Ag Eagle, of course, is doing some amazing things. Um, you know, there there's just so many uh, I, I'm beyond excited about a lot of them. Um, there's just, there's so much workhorse is starting to put out a lot of stuff on, you know, talking about their drone. They put out a, like a, a picture today with just the drone in itself. It, it's beyond exciting guys. This sector is truly coming. Um, I cannot be more excited about it. And it, it's absolutely amazing. You know, the nickname, the drone King I'm running with it. I think that's phenomenal. Uh, I, I can't thank you guys enough for coming up with that. I don't even know who the first one was, but it, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I, I love it. It's it's absolutely cool. What is going on, everyone? What is going on? I appreciate everyone swinging in from wherever you guys are swinging in from, checking out the live stream. If you are new to the channel, if you're new to the live stream, we do these every Friday night uh, starting at 850 Central Standard Time, I used to do them at 8.45, but I was always cutting it close because we put the little guy down around 8.30, so I pushed it back just five minutes. Uh, that five minutes is actually very helpful. Uh, so we start these at 8.50 Central Standard Time. As you guys can see up in the top, it would be my, uh, let's see, it would be my left. Um, it, you guys can see where my Instagrams are at. Uh, swing on over there, you get a lot of video updates when it comes to the YouTube channel. And then my Twitter is right there at LucasMurphy4848. You guys will get a ton of information on penny stocks, over-the-counter stocks, drones, of course, because I'm the drone king. And I mean, it's just the list goes on and on. So I try to, you know, retweet and tweet as much as I possibly can with a lot of pertinent information. So those are the those are the social media outlets. I'm glad everyone's popping in. Tim swinging in. Ch is it Chang? Chang, I appreciate you swinging in, my friend. 
Nora's here, Sam's here, the whole gang is rolling in, Darren's here, this is what I like to see, this is what I like to see, Darren, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, my friend, holy smokes, holy smokes, bro, if I don't buy Workhorse, I'll hunt me forever, haunt you forever, exactly, exactly, Young, it is reported that my first investing stock, CRB, Decarbonization plus Acquisition Corporation is being investigated relating to its proposed merger with... <laughs> ah, hey, stuff like that happens. Stuff like that happens, Young. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. We've all endured some crazy stuff. You know, I did... Uh, I tried to do some day trading slash penny stocks right out the gate, and it did not go well for me. As we get going, you know, as you get going, you'll learn. You'll start to learn a ton of stuff about everything, and you'll you'll kick it in gear. Trust me. Trust me. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Man, I'm excited. Excited, guys. A lot, a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. So, guys, I'm going to quickly go through some of the stuff that, man, I was moving a lot. I really didn't have... Uh, I was really, really busy at work this week. We had just a ton of stuff going on. So, I really didn't get to put all my buys and sells in the Discord um, like I wanted to. Uh, that's something that I'm gonna definitely stay up on for sure as we continue to, um, you know, as we continue to move forward on with the Discord. Is to anytime I make a move of any sort, you guys are aware of what's going on. So it was extremely hard this uh, this week just because of everything that was going on. So I do have Strike Force. Um, I did add Global UAV Technology, Sensionics, obviously, Desktop Metal still there, Social Capital still there, Climate Change, CLI is still there. Ag Eagle, the monster that was actually like keeping me somewhat, you know, level today. Ag Eagle, Switchback Energy, doesn't sound like uh, the merger is going to happen. Sorry, Duxter, uh, they didn't have enough votes. Um, sounds like to me that they have a lot of uh, institutional or um, um, not institutional uh, retail investors and not enough people showed up. So it sounds like the merger is going to be pushed back. Conical Phillips, Pfizer, Nano Dimensions, Dragonfly, Tesla, Merkin Co., Walmart, Microsoft, Apple, Cento Mining, Procter & Gamble, Verizon, Quantum Computing, Metro Mile, which actually just did their merger, um, Takeoff, Takeoff, which is uh, Drone Delivery Canada, ABML, of course, have to have that one in there. I have 20 shares of that. I'm beyond excited about that. I do have some on the TD side. Uh, Stable Road Acquisitions, I wonder when that one's actually going to merge. Uh, that one's been talked about going in ARKX. Workhorse Group obviously had a down day. Uh, maybe at some point they get the postal contract. Um, we're getting closer and closer to March, you know, the final month of their deadline. So hopefully we'll find something out. MP Materials, Clean Spark, Social Life, WDLF. If you guys haven't checked out my video on them, go check it out. AITX, Artificial Intelligence, Romeo Power, Red Cat, Blue Sphere. Beyond excited about Blue Sphere. I have a guy that I consider a mentor at work. Really kind of uh, you know gave me the game plan on Blue Sphere. I do eventually expect to put out a video on Blue Sphere. Um, you know, obviously uh, Misty, who is another amazing YouTuber, has been putting out a lot of penny stocks, a lot of over the counter. He covered Blue Sphere, um, so I definitely checked his video out. Accent Solar, uh, New America, to Solar Enterprises, TSNP guys. We got a lot to talk about them. Labor Smart, uh, Ride, Bantech. Obviously, I went in on Bantech. I started a little high and I averaged down. It still didn't average down enough, as you guys can see right here. It's at uh, 0 0.49. Um, I'm not anywhere close to that. I'm in the sixes. So, um, you know, it is what it is. I do think that that company is going to be all right. Alpine 4 Tech, and then HCMC, and then obviously HQGE. So, Really got a lot um, at 42 different stocks, 42 different stocks. Um, and then my TD account is relatively the same. Um, the only ones I have a little different are Clove, Genus, IDEX, Viper, um, and then basically Sundial, um, and then basically everything else is the same. T2 Biosystems, but for the most part, everything seems to be the same in that one. And that's more of my... Um, take a, a even bigger risk type account so that's kind of what we're looking at so let's get back to the chat let's see what's going on let's see what's going on uh hope nothing negative could happen 
All right, the Monster Red Bull combo. Holy smokes, Monster Red Bull combo. I used to do that when I was working overnights and I thought my heart was going to explode. Dragonfly to go through the NASDAQ. Yes, they are. I'm beyond excited about that. And they are doing some amazing things, guys. Not only with drones, but they're doing it with the pandemic. Absolutely amazing. Sam, I took your advice. I FOMO'd and got back into CCIV. Uh, Tim, I like it. No problem, Young. And then, ha, ha Monster Red Bull would probably give me a heart attack. Darren, yeah, mine almost did. I thought I seriously was going to have some type of, like, kidney rupture or something was bad was going to happen. Bought some RTP, Q-E-L-L. -L. Sam, you're always coming out with new ones, man. Tim, thank you. I had a good day at the, uh, with that stock, at least. <laughs> Health warning alert, Nora. I'm flying like Ag Eagle. Let's hope so, Darren. Let's hope so. Uh, Chang, any idea on ACIC yet? I haven't, but RTP yet. Uh, you know, I've heard some stuff on ACIC. Um, I, that's one video I do want to get out for sure. Guys, I'm going to definitely try to get to a little bit more air mobility. You know, I kind of had everything planned out for this week. And um, I was going to do a video last night, but obviously the little man was uh, a little bit more want a little bit more attention and so that's just the way it goes sometimes so i had to slow it down but we're going to get back in the grind obviously i try to provide a video every single day and do the best i possibly can sometimes i do two sometimes i do three uh we'll get there for sure uh what else is going on sins ctrm uamy we're movers this week and over course my favorite awesome awesome tim love to hear it my friend missed you last week Obviously, my team didn't do so well in the Super Bowl. Really a big letdown. I feel like I've gotten past it, though. The reason is we won the year prior. We got back. And, uh, you know, I expect a lot to happen again here in the future. It's just the way it goes sometimes. Can't be that disappointed. Humble is in the UK now. Have some Block 3. Very cool. That's awesome, Darren. I know you, I know you mentioned it. So that's freaking awesome. Uh, that's one thing I was really going to talk about, guys. So obviously a lot of people are involved with Weeble. A lot of people are involved with, you know, a lot of different things uh, around TSNP. There's so much, you know, hype around it. So many people talking about it, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on stock twits, whether it's on whatever platform you guys use, even in the Weeble, you know, comments area, there's a ton of comments going on. So guys, I been doing some research and TSNP was added to Weeble. And it was kind of like a trial run almost or a way to start the process. Then they halted the trading and they stopped it basically. Um, and a person that I follow quite a bit on Twitter posted uh, and basically put a screenshot up that showed um, why they halt things the way they did and put the message in, like they did. Basically what it said is that due to a name change or a ticker change, or the fact that they're going to be, you know, delisting and going to over the counter is a reason why they halt the trading. In this case, we understand that TSNP is already over the counter and they're, they've been discussed having a, you know, ticker change and a name change in quarter one. So per the, the little statement that they had, it says in one to three days, it will be switching over or doing, taking the action in order to continue trading. So it sounds like to me, guys, that TSNP is actually going to be changing its ticker very, very soon. Um, and then obviously that's a very, very positive catalyst. And then that just is going to cause this thing to go. If you, um, you know, obviously we'll look at the chart. Let's just go ahead and do that. Um, TSNP. So guys, as you can see, there really has been a lot of consolidation. Uh, I don't want to go too far out, so we'll do five day. Um, but really, as you guys can see, there truly has, so we got to $1.93 and then we've obviously had a decent drop off, but really this has been a pretty, con you know, for the last couple days, it's been consolidated pretty good. And a lot of the time that means that it's getting ready to do some type of run. Um, I believe that this is definitely going to be a positive run. I definitely think that this is going to go in a very good upward direction, especially if they start to really get some positive catalyst. Um, obviously they're, you know allowing their ETXs to be opening up across the entire world. Um, it's just amazing, amazing information. So I'm beyond excited about it. I'm beyond excited about TSNP. Uh, I just think that they have a very, very bright future. I know a ton of people are invested in them. 
you know, two dollars. I thought, you know, in my last video that I did on TSMP, I really said like a dollar to a dollar fifty. I was trying to very be very conservative in that aspect. Like I didn't want to go too aggressive because, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to just overdo it and and hype it way up. Um, and so I stayed around a dollar, a dollar fifty. Obviously, it blew past that, but it since then has settled in right around in between that a dollar to a dollar fifty. I do foresee two to three dollars probably here in the next month to really kind of like a ne another month, so one to two months. Um, and I would say by the end of the year, my projection for it is definitely five to seven dollars. I don't think that that's out of question. Um, I do wonder if in Q3 if they start discussing or potentially apply for you know, a NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, um, you know, type process to try to get there. Uh, it'll just be interesting because, you know, if they get to the dollar mark, obviously their market cap um, is doing very well. So as we can see, the market cap is 5.88 billion. It'll just be very interesting to see, you know, what what ends up actually happening with TSNP. I'm excited for the merger. I think that the, it's going to be a very beneficial one. A lot more people are going to have a connection because when you look up TSNP, as you can see down here, uh, it has TSNP has nothing to do with actually what Humble is doing. So I think once we really get the name change, people become even that much more aware. Institutions can start to invest once they really get you know onto a market. Um, I think that's just going to be even more exciting. So that's my thoughts on TSNP. Obviously, you know, I've done multiple, multiple videos. So um, I know a lot of people are interested in it for sure. Uh, the, let's see what you guys saying. What you guys saying? Tim, I was hoping everyone jump on it. Humble is in the UK now. Yeah, we got covered. That bro RTP is bringing in Joby. That's freaking awesome if that's the case. Uh, Quell is bringing Lilium, I think. Throw some cash into RTP. How do you think the Canadian drone company, P Plymouth Rock Tech? Young, you know, that's something I'm going to have to look into. That's one that's been requested. Um, I'm definitely going to dive into that one for sure. That's one that's been on my list. Um, so I'm definitely looking to cover it. I have an entire, like, I have the whole video, you know, ready to roll. I just need to do it. Um, I've had it actually set up for a little bit now, probably at least a week and a half. Um, and then I just... You know, I wanted to cover HCMC. I wanted to cover some of the penny stocks that not only am I invested in, but I know a lot of people are invested in. I want to get a lot of my information out. Um, so that that's my thoughts on that. You had a chance to look at CTRM, or you? I honestly haven't yet, Tim. I just been I've been so busy at work. I'm trying to get to some of these stuff. I'm gonna write it down real quick. CTRM. And U A M Y. Got it. Cha ching. I know I know you've been talking about it. And it sounds like you're making some decent money on it. Interested in everyone's thoughts of if I'm the only one of these plays. You think I'll be able to buy Dragonfly on Robin Hood? I think uh so they're getting ready to go to the NASDAQ pretty quickly. Um I would assume that it's gonna be pretty quickly because they're applying. And then, you know, I think they'll meet all the requirements. They're doing amazing things. Um, let's see what their market cap is. <coughs> DFLYF. So their market cap is currently 213.98 million. Um, I think once they can continue to go up a little bit, I think once they get to about $5, we can expect that market cap to really kind of kick it in a little bit more gear. Um, and I would imagine, I would imagine they would be all right. I would imagine they'd be all right. And then I think you'll be able to trade them on, on Robin Hood. The fence, buddy. What's going on, my friend? <laughs> yeah, you missed the whole spiel. TSNP. TSNP. CTRM Caster Maritime Inc. Brief. Cyprus based company. Company engaged in the ocean transportation of dry bulk cargoes worldwide through ownership and operation of bulk carrier vessels. It aims to increase the fleet acquisition. I think. Um, so, Tim, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that. Um, 
CJ covers this one quite a bit. Uh, I'm definitely going to, I was going to check out his video on it. Um, and then, yeah, most definitely. I know, I know CJ's covered this a ton uh, for sure. So that's definitely one I'm going to have to look at. Uh, United States and Tenmi corporations engaged in the production of sil silver, gold, Zolite products, companies, mining, transportation, milling, smelting, marketing company it has three segments, United States. Very interesting. Charts look good. For sure. For sure. I'm definitely going to, Tim, if you got them on there, man, I'm, I'm going in. I'll have to check them out. Definitely get something going. Definitely get him something going. Yeah, you know, Dragonfly has been, you know, it was down, but I, it's, it's, guys, I, I watched the video and, you know, it made a lot of sense. And what was said is basically if the fundamentals of the company do not change, then because days go up and down, it really, it has no, no significance. If they're reporting good news and the financials are increasing, then those are the days that you expect green days. If it's going down because somebody's shorting the stock or it's just having one of those days where people just aren't buying as much as they're selling, then you know, you're gonna have red days. But when the financials of the company aren't really changing a whole lot, then you know that it's just the way it is. And and I think that's what what's going on with Dragonfly. I think that's what's going on with a lot of companies, in all honesty, because a lot of the financials aren't changing with these companies and if they you know they're putting out a lot of positive news. And they're putting out some good information. And so it, it could be a positive catalyst in a financial aspect. I don't know. It's just some crazy stuff going on at the time. Fitz, buddy, what's up, brother? I'm holding TSMP for the long haul, baby. Me too. Me too. You know, I was actually looking today. I, you know, I go back and kind of evaluate some of my trades at times. <clears throat> and I'm thinking to myself, how I could have gotten a hundred thousand shares of TSMP, and then I started thinking why I did not get a hundred thousand shares of TSMP. You know, I I have thirty thousand. Um, I still am very happy with that, but man, and I think that's why I reevaluated. And when I went ahead and uh, got HCMC, I got a million. So. Materials used for EV batteries, very interesting. Yeah, so it's basic, it, it's similar to ABML a little bit then, right? Except for the fact that they recycle batteries. You traded CTRM for a quick $50 swing trade. I got it out of the... Nora, isn't that, isn't that one that uh, CJ covers? I'm, I'm pretty sure CTRM is one he covers. Kale, what's going on, my friend? What is going on? Do you see the logo? I had to put your logo up, my friend. I had to put it up. Kale's a beast when it comes to that. Uh, you have 500 shares to uh, see what happens. I, yeah, I think that's perfect, Tim. I think, you know, to see what happens, play it out, and then, uh, you know, make your decisions off of that. You have SNDL, Lucas. See the volume of that this week? Holy cow. Yeah, Darren, I, I did. Um, well, I still do, but I sold half my... Um, I got lucky. So I sold half yesterday. I took basically well over my profits and uh, just sold half. Um, I had, I think I had 500 shares and I cut it down to 250 when it hit, hit a pretty big high yesterday. So I cut it to 250 and luckily today, you know, it was down for, for most of the part. I do think it made a pretty decent return if I do remember correctly. Uh, actually it looks like it finished down pretty good. So yeah, I, I took, I ended up trading it. Maybe it was, yeah. So I trade, it got to 396 on the 11th. What's today? The... Where did my calendar? 12th. So yeah, yesterday. Um, I ended up trading it probably around 280, 289, I think it was around there. And I took half and then I'm, I figured I'd let the rest ride and see what happens. And obviously it came back to a little bit of reality, but we had a decent consolidation there. So I'm sticking with the position. I'm going to leave it in for a long time, especially with all the hype around it for sure. Fence, but so yeah, you know, guys, it, it HCMC, there's nothing really. I think a lot, and, and here's my thinking on a lot of this. Um, you know, when things like when when days like today happen, you start to see a lot of red pop up. Pop up. <clears throat> people get out. Of, pe people make sporadic moves. 
They're, they see other things around them that are red. And there's a lot of things in people's portfolios that they're not loyal to. And obviously, you know, not everyone is loyal to stocks. And, and a lot of people say you shouldn't have emotions in stocks. My thinking is, is that when we see red days like today, um, for example, we'll just use sundial growers as an example. So let's say that you're in, let's say that you're in, um, I'm just going to use HCMC for example, and you have a million shares like I do. There's a chance that you're like, Hey, sundial is down. It is down a decent amount. Um, I'm seeing it's down 12.61%. I've been really wanting to load up on sundial. So what I'm going to do is I, I have a million shares of, uh, of HCMC if I reduce that down to let's say 500,000, that's gonna give me set amount of dollars. I can take that set amount of dollars and throw it into Sundial because I've, um, I've been wanting to get into Sundial. So that's what I think a lot happens when it comes from really a retail investor standpoint. And I think sometimes that's what happens with Ag Eagle too. People are like, man, you know, Ag Eagle, it's consistently kind of doing this thing, um, you know, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull my money out because, man, HCMC is popping. A lot of people are talking about it on YouTube. I'm seeing it all over stock twits. It's all over Twitter. You know, I can actually take a few shares of uh, Ag Eagle, still keep a decent position, and then I'm going to throw as much as I possibly can of that at HCMC because it's a cheaper price. So I think you start to see a lot of that movement happen, and that's why I think a lot of people on red days like today, it's almost like a panic sell. And I understand a lot of people take profits. I understand, and, and I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. The whole point is to make money. But you know, I think for when people start to see red and they immediately panic sell, you know, you you got into the stock for a reason, and you believe something for a reason, and that's why you got in. So that's just my thoughts. Um, you know, I I could probably talk about stuff like this for days. So that's just my thinking behind it. Kale is a legend. He is. He truly is a legend. Fantastic. Fantastic. I had a dollar call option on Sundial and made like a hundred and was done with it, Tim. Yeah, I didn't want it to have happen with AMC and GameStop, so I bounced with a profit around 300 That's awesome. That's awesome. You guys making money. Evan, what's going on, my friend? CYP had a great potential long-term. Easy on lithium mining. Cor yeah, you know, lithium mining, guys, lithium mining is the future. There, There is a potential shortage that's supposed to happen. You guys got to think of everything that lithium obviously is involved in. So there's going to be some big time lithium companies that are going to start to arise. And, you know, it's going to be a good investment, I feel. Um, you just got to find some ones that you're interested in. Make sure that they're really doing a, the job that is at hand and that is, you know, mining or producing lithium. And yeah, for sure. Kale have, haha, thank you, Nora. I lost track of time and would have hated to miss this. <laughs> Kale, you're the man. Tim, then your Sundial tanks and the other stocks rip. Yep. Nora, I think crypto is causing some stock prices to fade a bit as well. Yeah, I I, I do too. I think when, uh, you know, a lot of things are hyped around crypto, uh, I do think a lot of people pull their money as well and try to get into crypto, rightfully so pulling out money to load up on Bitcoin. I think so. And I think because you can buy in, you know, you don't have to necessarily buy a full coin. You can buy a portion of a coin. I think that's another thing as well. Um, I, I just, I do. Uh, and that's just kind of my, my take on why we have such down red days. Uh, at least it was for me. Um, you know, for the most part, I would say, you know, across the board, across the board, I'm still doing really, really well. Um, uh, so I, I hit, I pulled it up. So I hit, uh, 177,456 in the entire portfolio. Um, it sucks because two days ago I was at 190. So I, I did have back to back down red days today. I was actually down. I thought it was more, it's only 3.80%, but that was actually a loss of $7,000. Um, it is what it is guys. I, I, like I said, I appreciate days like to, to like this. Uh, one of my big ones was Alpine Ford technologies. They did a direct offering. They're about to go to the NASDAQ probably in the next couple days. Um, I would assume probably at some point next week they they'd be, you know, 
take that switch and they're on the NASDAQ. Um, it's just one of the, it's one of those things like Alpine Ford Technologies was easily a buy today, $7.07. I mean, there's no question, especially when a lot of people are forecasting it to be $25. That's crazy. So that was easy for me to, to, you know, to see people buying that one. So I'll kind of run through guys. Um, actually I can probably pull it up for here. Hope I remember this. I usually don't have to log in, it just scans my face. Yeah, guys, so as you guys can see, 177,456. Um, so my one month, I'm up 92.19%. I've made $85,122 <clears throat> year to date. Year to date, I'm up 122.99%. We're looking at $97,877.43. And since I started this entire journey, I'm up 1,175.88. That is a total two year change of, because I've only been doing this for two years, $163,548. Um, it's, you know, this, this last really kind of, I'm going to do a year to, well, let's go to one year. So as you guys can see this, like ra last rally from December until now has just been phenomenal. Like I'm super grateful for a lot of stuff. Um, Sam, I saw you in, um, Sam, I saw you in, uh, in the discord. Uh, you were asking about ag Eagle. Currently my market value is $47,775 for ag Eagle. That's a, quantity of 3250 my uh investment was only ten thousand dollars so i've made thirty seven thousand five hundred and seventy three dollars alpine ford technologies we're looking at 800 like i said guys today we were down 824 dollars but overall i'm still up four thousand one hundred and eighty two dollars cannot complain about that abml i have 100 shares up 98 um so with these it i the only thing i don't like about the the desktop portion is the fact that it doesn't show your overall gains. Um, it does show your percentage of holdings, but it doesn't show your overall percentage of gains. So for Ag Eagle, my gains so far are 368%. Um, and so I'm pretty excited about that, guys. And obviously, we are not anywhere close to being done. And I am by no means anywhere close to selling any of those shares. Uh, AP, ALPP, I'm up 283.97%. <clears throat> so being down $824, that does hurt, but still okay. ABML uh, up 34%. Apple, which is my baby. Dang it, I keep hitting the screen. Apple up 36.45%. AITX, as you guys can see, I've made $948. I actually sold um, 5,000 shares of that in order to um, load up on uh, TSNP. Um I'm up for AITX 402%. ASTI uh, up 126%. Bantech, I'm down 35%. Uh, Blue Sphere, I'm down 36%. Clean Spark, make sure I'm staying up with this. Clean Spark uh, up 210%. Conoco Phillips up 53%. Desktop Metal up 189%. Dragonfly 42%. Attack uh, Takeoff 108%. Global UAV only up 36.89. Make sure I'm staying up with this. Yeah. Um, Labor Smart, I'm up. I just got Labor Smart today. Uh, is that even? Yeah. So here it is. I got 22,000 shares. It only cost me $279. $77. I'm up $2.20. I do believe that this one's going to be a little bit um, special. Uh, they offer blue collar jobs to, for cities. Uh, if you need like a contract, things like that. So, um, just my thinking on that Lordstown, I'm up 25%. Definitely going to be running on that one. I'm not even worried about that one at all. Uh, Merck and co I only hold because it's $74 and that's not going to really gain me much. So it's just sitting there. Metro mile, I'm up 34%. Microsoft 47%. Uh, keep going down. Quantum computing up 433%. There it is. 
Um, Red Cat, 31. Romeo, 30, 61. S-A-N-P, um, I'm up 42%. Sins, I'm up 57 WDLF, guys, I think is going to be special. I threw some chunks at that thing. Where's it at? WDLF. WDLF. I'm, I'm probably missing it. WDLF. WDLF. Where did you go? IPOE. There it is. So, guys, I threw $5,000 at it. 5837 I did a video on it the other day. I really do think that this one's going to be pretty, pretty significant. I think that they offer a very good service. This isn't one that I intend to like hold as long as like an Ag Eagle or Workhorse or an Apple or any type like that. Um, obviously, you guys can see I have 515,000 shares. My goal is to really kind of hit a percentage, um, maybe 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 a, a number, and then I'm going to kind of boot it out the door. Um, and so that's kind of not all of it. I'll probably cut it in half and then and then let it ride. Um, and then obviously TSP guys, a absolute monster. TSNP, my return is 459%. Um, guys, I've held this, I you know, I've held this thing since it was 0 0.15, 0 0.12, um, 0 0.0, obviously zero. But as you guys can see, it's a dollar thirty. Um, it was down three thousand nine hundred today, but overall it's made me thirty-two thousand um, dollars. and that's that's nowhere to the point where it's even at the end. Workhorse. Obviously, this thing at one point was up thirty thousand uh, dollars. Since then, um, I did sell two hundred shares uh, a, a, at least a couple weeks ago, and it was to fill up to TSNP. And then, um, but I'm I'm holding this one until at least an announcement. Uh, my plan with Workhorse guys is on the announcement. My goal is for it to hit seventy five dollars. The moment it hits seventy five dollars, that's going to be reduced down to five hundred. That'll get my entire original investment back. And then I'm playing with house money. I'm leaving the 500 until whenever, whatever happens. Um, 500 is going to be what I'm rolling with. So that is the portfolio, guys. I do enjoy sh showing you guys, not necessarily for bragging rights or anything like that. Um, the reason I show you guys that is because I started this two years ago. I started this journey two years ago, and anyone can do what I've done. It's just putting in the time, putting in the homework, putting in the due diligence, and, and you guys will get there. Trust me. Every single person can do it. You just gotta, you just gotta believe and you gotta put in the time, put in the effort. And you know, I did, I'm not feeding this thing with crazy amounts of money. It's literally like a hundred dollars every paycheck. And that's what I've built. So you guys can do it too. All right. Time to get back to it. That was a lot. I think CCIV is making the market red. Yeah, it probably is that dumpster fire. Uh, when it's announced, I vote Sam get a lucid logo tattooed on his forearm and a diamond on his palm. <laughs> Healthy price action is all good. It's a long term game. The drone king, glad you mentioned that. Is it okay to see red days? I learned to ride with them. It makes so much uh, easier. And like you said, bought for a reason. Exactly. Tim, I don't have tattoos, bro. I love them, but I don't think I'll ever get one. Good idea. Uh, yes is good to have balanced perspective there are good and bad days there are some top numbers anyways yep for sure wow you will make millions in your account but the time you return tim you get one for me if merger happens you get a tattoo the next day i feel you got it already told lucas i will get ag eagle logo tattooed when it hits 425 yep i'm pretty sure i'll probably get one too bro i'm laughing so hard Tim, really, you'll do it? Once the merger is done, maybe. You have a scary amount of stocks. I appreciate that, Evan. Yeah, I, you know, I I do, um, and I really do. I keep track of every single one of them. Um, as crazy as it is, I have as much, like, attention to every single one of those. So, um, you know, that's why when a lot of people recommend stuff, um, I, I do try to do videos that I'm going to invest in. I, uh, we kind of had a talk about this in my Discord the other day. I don't mind making videos for people. That's the intent of the channel. It's to provide content for the viewers. So just because I put a video out doesn't always necessarily mean that I'm going to invest into it. Um, but it's something that I'm interested in. And that's why I do it. But it's also for the viewership. I mean, you guys are interested. So I'm going to put the amount of quality into it as if I'm interested in it and I want to get in it as well. Like I did a video on eHang the other day. I'm very, very, very interested in eHang. 
But as you guys can see, I, I literally have everything that I want right now, and I'm basically strapped. And so um, once you know I start to accumulate more funds by things popping, and then I can sell and then make more money, it's going to go into things like eHang and Lulium and all these other ones. Um, you know, CCIV at some point because I'm sure I'll have time because they won't announce the uh, Lucid Motors and it'll come back down. <laughs> so you know, that's just th those are those are my thoughts. Like you know, I got into things for a reason. I believe in them. I just don't buy them, hold them for a couple days, and sell them. I I hold them for an intention. Um, I typically try to get to a certain dollar amount or a certain percentage. And then I always pull back my initial investment and let everything else ride, um, house money. So that's my thoughts. I'll start a sleeve with company logos that I invested in will never sell. <laughs> well, we can't say uh, not, we, our financial friend can't say that he would get a workhorse one because uh, we obviously know he origami that one. Tim, that would be hilarious. Tesla, Disney, Apple, Ag Eagle, Lucid, Dragonfly. If I can buy it one day, <laughs> that's awesome. Lucas needs that Ag Eagle back piece. I need an Ag Eagle hat or at least a hoodie. I want to see pictures when you get them. <laughs> Your numbers are proof of concept. Kale for sure. And that's why I'm so transparent, guys. I'm, I'm very transparent with my viewers. And the reason is, is because I want everyone to know that I am doing what I'm saying I'm doing. Like, Anytime I do a video on something, I'm going to make sure that if I have it and I haven't already showed, I'm going to throw it in there so you guys are aware that I am invested into it. Um, and so that's why I'm so transparent. I, I want you guys to be aware of, of what I'm invested in and, and my thoughts, my true thoughts on it. So that's why I, I make sure I show you guys. It just sucks that I, I got to be grateful because when I first started, um, right before we got back to doing live streams public, um, I just hit a hundred thousand and that was probably the greatest feeling. Um, it, it's something that I've always wanted to strive towards and get towards in a retirement account. Um, it's like a goal cause it's like, you know, six digits. So I hit that and then literally within less than a month, I'm already pushing 200 and it's just, it, it's, it's hard to explain how it feels. Um, and it, it's kind of like a numb feeling because you're like, I, I can't get to this yet because it is my retirement account, but it's still like, man, this is crazy. Cause like I'm seeing this happen and I, it's just hard to explain guys. It really is. And it, it's just a, it's a humbling experience. It, it really is. Um, it's something I never thought I was going to be capable of doing or would even be, you know, having the interest in doing. But once I really got a focus on it and, and really started grinding it out, guys, it's an addiction. Like, it truly is like it's a lot of fun to see you build, you know, your wealth, your retirement, your your future, and you're doing it based on you know something you're taught as a kid, and that's doing homework, that's putting in the time, putting in the effort to really learn your craft and perfect your craft, and that's what's exciting to me, um, and that's why I do YouTube as well because it's me, you know, doing the homework, doing the research, but then providing it back to the viewership, and and I think that's what's exciting. So. I almost forgot to say thanks for the Discord, Lucas. It really is awesome and is the only thing that makes me laugh when we have those damn red days. So thanks, guys. Yeah, I, I hope we get more and more people in there. It's not that you guys are not fun. <laughs> it's just I want I want everyone to see what you guys offer. Um, the Discord is phenomenal. You guys obviously provide, you know, so many people pop in there and provide such amazing information. Um, and that's a big reason why I wanted to start it is because the wealth of knowledge that can flow through there. Uh, it, it's just fun, but it's also a fun experience. Like we can just joke and laugh and, you know, like, do I really believe CCIV is a dumpster fire? No, but I like it. And I enjoy giving Sam a hard time because, you know, he was giving me flack the other day. So it's like, the, it's just, that's how it is. And that, that's why I really enjoy doing the discord. And, you know, I'm glad the OGs are in there. Um, especially Tim and, you know, everyone. <laughs> Hey, Sam, the Drone King, you got a great community that is being built here. Kale, and, and I'm glad you're a part of it too, my friend. I appreciate it. Drone King, you got me for real. I thought you was serious. Threw me off for a second. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I definitely, def, um, you know, was wasn't necessarily like full on like mad or anything, but you know, people have every right to to make videos on their own perspectives, and I wasn't just making stuff up, and that's what people I felt thought I was doing. Um, I, a lot of them I don't even think watched the videos because if they would have watched, then I actually provided some credible sources, some actual like credible articles that talked about this potentially being something at one point. Um, and so I just wanted to provide a different perspective and it just seemed like everyone was just so mad and like, Oh, you're terrible at what you do, blah, blah, blah. So, but it's not that I don't feel that CCIV is going to get it. I do think that they are. Um, I think that CCIV is obviously getting things in place for a reason. And, you know, I think Lucid Motors is going to be special, but um, I just like giving, you know, I like giving you a hard time cause I know you care about it and, and that's what it's about. So, but no, I definitely wasn't being serious about it being a dumpster fire. <laughs> What's going on, Rico? Reco. Appreciate you swinging in my friend. Yep. We need to keep calm in the red days for sure. For sure. Remember to have fun on red ones. Green days are beautiful. Yep. And you 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 appreciate red days um, because they do create buying opportunities. You always want to make sure you're getting good prices, and, and so you gotta you gotta have red days at some point to to do that. So you gotta kind of have somewhat of appreciation for shorts because they allow that to happen. I respect you being transparent for sure, Yong. No problem. Uh. Tim, it is uh, going to be negative 15 tomorrow with a wind chill of like negative 30. Uh, I think that's what the sniffles are coming from, probably because I'm so sad that that's actually happening. Um, and I'm hoping that my truck starts tomorrow because we have to take our littles to the vet just to get checkups. Um, and so I'm hoping that I don't freeze. Uh, some people up north are used to that. Uh, I'm not used to zero. I'm used to like 20. So, Yeah. That's what's going on. What's up, Bobby? Appreciate you swinging in, my friend. Appreciate you swinging in. That hurt me. See, you got mad like that. I heard it on your voice. Yeah, you know, it did frustrate me because I don't feel... I. What makes me mad about it is the fact that those people don't know me personally. Um, they don't know anything about our channel. They don't know the community we have and how positive the community is. And for them to just say, like just stupid things as I would refer to them as keyboard warriors. They don't, they don't know anything about what we got. And for me to, to put a video out like that, that was very frustrating. So, um, that was my thoughts on it, but yeah, it, it is what it is. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to stay emotional about it. I'm not going to be frustrated about it. It is. I moved past it. I just like to give you crap cause I know you're a CCIV guy. Evan, I have workhorse a TSMP, APHA, CYP, and I'm happy with all. I'm up 400% so far. That's awesome, Evan. That's awesome. Green days are bad when you wanted more shares. I found and don't have enough shares. Yep. You know, I was saying that today. I was like, man, I wish I could just save funds for red days, but you just don't know when really these types of days are coming unless you just are in with the in in. And because uh, I think some people knew that this day was coming. I just didn't know it was going to be like this, at least for me. What's up, Lucas? First time in your live stream. I appreciate you swinging in, my friend. Hopefully you uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, we do these every single Friday, um, and they are a blast. You, you really get to meet a ton of amazing people. This is a deep community. There's a lot of positive people in here. There's a lot of really cool stuff that goes on. Uh, the Discord is majority of every single person you're going to see in here. Um, it's just it's a fun, fun time to really kind of just you know, recap the week, but then also just talk about things and, and really get through it. And that's why I enjoy doing these. It's like, you know, I get to step, I get to step into my zone with my other family. Nora, holy smokes for real. What's that about? Maybe I said something. I just didn't read it. I'm in Florida, so that's none of my business. Oh, gotcha. Makes for awesome beard sickles. Yes, it does. Especially when I sneeze and you get like that, you know, a little bit of that 
The good stuff. Stay warm, Lucas. Keep those little warm. I will. I will. We'll try. One's got to get, we think he's got to get anxiety medicine. He's been having some major issues. So my wife has been home due to the pandemic for work. Um, and she's working from home. She's been doing it for since March. And um, I think he's just been so used to her being here that anytime we put them up, uh, like when we leave, he has like panic attacks, like anxiety real bad. And he like pees everywhere. Um, and then he's been kind of doing it at night too. And that's not typically how he functions. So we're probably gonna have to get him some anxiety medicine because at some point she's probably gonna have to go back to work. So that's uh that's what we're gonna be dealing with tomorrow. But he also has got to get his shots for like rabies and things like that. So just normal. Evan, you doing good? So f uh, you doing so good for yourself? Yeah, Evan, Evan, you're doing awesome. So I've been looking to the drone sector heavy. So much potential in many sections other than just package deliveries. My question is, what are some flaws you see with drones? Um, I, you know, honestly, I I think they're working through those. And that's why we really haven't seen it pop out and really haven't hasn't been a thing quite yet. The FAA is obviously um, it is working through the, the basically the game plan, the playbook, every rule that, you know, everyone's going to have to abide by. Um, and so I think from a security standpoint, I think from a, you know, safety standpoint, all that is being conducted right now. And that's why things have just haven't been so just thrown in and, and we're seeing that. So actually a, a true negative, um, I don't know if there's really a negative yet because I want to see things kind of function in a normalcy. I, like I want to see drones actually deliver the packages. Um, I want to see, you know, them actually conduct the service. Um, and, and so that's kind of the, that's my thinking, you know, a lot of people are able to fly drones from a standpoint of, um, you know, surveying and doing evaluations. Um, and that's why you're able to see some drones doing some crazy cool things like flamethrowers attached to them, taking plastic off of power lines and things like that is because they're not flying to a certain limit that is above the FAA. Um, but package delivery is going to be one of the biggest ones. And, and that's obviously when I say package delivery, I'm talking more than just package delivery. I'm talking like uh, food deliveries, pharmaceutical deliveries, um, vaccine deliveries, um, you know, the uh, Amazon, the Walmarts, the everything like that as well. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of things that go into the, the, the drones. And so I think security is going to be very key. Um, but there's just, like you said, so much potential and it's just really hard to pick out flaws because I think they're working on it so hard. I have been in polar vortex in Alberta. Most of the week has been negative 40 to negative 50 Celsius in case you can't speak Canadian. Negative 50 Celsius is the same as negative 50 Fahrenheit. Warms up next week. Holy smokes. Good lands. How's your car start? Well, I'll, uh, I'll enjoy my summer day of negative uh, 10 or whatever it's supposed to be, 15. Just walk them a lot. It helps get their energy out. Mine are bad too. Yeah. Well, we I wish I could do it a lot more, but when it's this cold, they, they don't even want to go out. Matt, I'm in Alberta, and this is BS. Lucas, I got my sweater today just in time. That's freaking awesome, Matt. That's freaking awesome. You'll have to send me a picture. You'll have to send me a picture for sure, man. Kale, your Insta photos are amazing. The white dog is hilarious. <laughs> Omar, what's going on, my friend? What do you think about PTNYF? Uh, is, I'm trying to think. Is that PTNYF? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's parcel. That's the one I just did. Um, you know, I think I really do like it. I really do like it. Um, the reason is Omar is because I think at some point we could see them enter into the drone sector. Um, I think that it's going to be absolutely, absolutely amazing. So I'm excited to see them really get going. Um, I do like anything logistics related. Um, and so I'm really am excited. So check out the video for sure. If you haven't seen it yet, CJ, what is going on? Just join the Discord new account. I appreciate you swinging in, CJ. A lot of phenomenal information, man. I know you got some Discords rolling. I know your thing is absolutely popping, so you got to keep up with that. But, you know, any chance you get to swing in, there's a lot of good information and amazing 
amazing group. I, I cannot be more excited to have the community I have. They are very positive, very amazing. They provide such absolute good content, uh, really good group. So I appreciate you swinging in, CJ. Nora has been making videos lately and they not popping up on my YouTube. Huh. Interesting. I, I've been, you know, I've been trying to keep up with, uh, trying to keep up with Nora's videos as much as I can. Her videos are so good. I saw something from Bobby there. Hang on. Let me go back up. Uh, my daughter wants a bulldog. Not looking forward to that, but she's saving her money. If she is responsible, then I said she can get one when she's six. Nice. Nice, Bobby. Well, you're going to be a bulldog owner. There you go. <laughs> You're going to want to watch the Stock League video this weekend, by the way. Hint, hint. Yes! Yes! Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? In the Stock League, Lucas Murphy, the Drone King, recommended Ag Eagle. That baby is soaring. Let's go. I don't know if I'm the top. I don't know if I'm the top, CG. My guess is I'm not the top. But I know I was at like 60, and I got to be at least be in the top 10. Got to at least be in the top 10. Chang, welcome to trade. Welcome trading with CJ. CJ, Evan, yet another plus for workhorse drone delivery. I'm excited. I'm excited for workhorse guys, and and I've been a very long term bull on workhorse. I've you know I was putting videos out, and obviously I saw that some other people took it under their wing and really just knocked it out of the park with workhorse. So I I really pulled back, but. I believe in workhorse well beyond the USPS contract. I can say this probably every live stream. I can say it every video I do. I think that most of their money, most of their revenue will eventually come from drones as a package deal. I think the biggest contract they're probably going to get is from UPS and it's going to be the package deal with the trucks and the drones. Just, just my thinking. It's just my thoughts. I haven't seen anything about that, but I think that's actually what's going to happen. I still need to buy some gear. I'm thinking next week. Do you have uh, gear for kids too or not? No, I don't have uh, Samuel. Not uh, not yet. Uh, it's something I was looking into because I wanted to get my son a uh, son a shirt. Uh, yeah, Sam, I'm making videos. Kale, I would have hated to be you that day. Yeah, Chang, I just saw some news about Elon Musk want to make EV drones too. Yeah, that's interesting. Um. You know, if that's the case, uh, I would be very interested to see, you know, if he does it personally or if they end up contracting it out like Amazon. You're the same way, very little sleep, stocks taking full control, favorite conversation. Now, exactly. You could, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy talking stocks. Hopefully with must mention of drones, don't make drone stock to fly up. I want our granite growth, uh, now hype. Yeah. It, you know, it, Ag Eagle was just on Kramer's show. Someone called in, and and uh, so I I can imagine you know if people keep that in their mind, I think Ag Eagle might have a decent run. Oh wow, yeah, that is co it is cold there. Woo! Randy's popping in. There he is, Randy. Bobby still have all 15,000 shares of TS and P and I picked up more on Weeble on Thursday than it wasn't available. Weird Bobby. So I talked about this a little earlier. Um, basically. So there was a post on Twitter and what's going on with that is it sounds like to me, they did a test run. Basically they allowed it people, certain people or amount of shares to be sold and then they cut it off. And what they cut off is um, it's an announcement. Basically, uh, I don't know how the information was found, but it was posted on Twitter and then it just ran like fire. Um, ideally, what they're saying is that they um, are going to allow it to trade once it changes its name. Well, the only reason why it's changing is because the ticker symbol's changing. Um, and it says that basically then they'll start trading on Weeble again in like one to three days. So with it being a three day weekend, I would assume probably at some point next weekend, we're going to or next week, we're going to see. The ticker change from TSNP to HM or HMBL, uh, and so it's interesting that it happened that way. So they basically told us it was going to happen without telling us. So that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Are you holding any? Yes, tack. Yeah, I uh, actually I just went through my entire portfolio. I do have a um, thousand shares of that. 
there was a bit of a pullback. Probably a good time to get in if you're not already. Thoughts? Cheers. I'm I'm excited for it, Matt. I really am. I think Drone Delivery Canada is uh, definitely in my top. Um, I'd say top five almost. Uh, yeah, top five. I would say when it comes to drone companies, um, I I just think that once they take it a little, uh, get a little bit more aggressive. Uh, I keep hearing that there's a chance that they could get a partnership or a letter of intent with um, Walmart Canada. If they do that, that's massive. Um, and so I'd be very interested to see if that's a route they go. Uh, and I'm definitely not selling any any shares anytime soon. I have FOMO full blast on workhorse. I want to own some shares. Well, Sam, my, uh, my best advice is just to get it before the USPS contract is announced. Chang, Elon Musk clarifies his plans to make electric planes in new interview. Yeah, I'd be interested to see if um, how much of a competitor he is to all these new like air mobility, air taxis. It'd be very interesting. Omar, I sell my UAVS to buy TSMP. Now I'm feeling it. I'm learning though. Just started six months ago. You know, it that that's a tough one. There really is. I, I understand the thought behind that. Um, I obviously am very, 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 very long term on both of those. And I would never, this is me personally, I would never touch my Ag Eagle shares, but I get why you did it. I do. I get why you did it. How many OGs on here? Uh, I'd have to see all of them. Don't want to. Omar, that will hunt you. <laughs> what is going on with QUBT? Uh, I think it's just we're in we're in a phase. We're in a phase. I, I'm not too worried about it. I'm I'm not too worried about it. Um, you know, obviously when when it starts to draw attention and people make a decent amount of money, you're gonna have a pullback. I think we're kind of getting back in gear. We're locking and loading and getting back in gear. We're getting back in gear. I, I still own it. So yeah, I just think that basically we're we're kicking it back in gear. So $14.99, obviously pullback, consolidation. I would say we're in basically a consolidation phase is where I would say. <laughs> I'm getting questions through text messages. Getting questions through text messages. Right on. What's uh, what was was I thinking? Did a video today? Check it out. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely swing by. Check it out, Bobby. For sure. For sure. I don't want to leave this live, but gotta go. Take care, Lucas. Keep those great videos coming. Chat with y'all. Lovely Valentine's weekend. Take it easy, my friend. Appreciate you swinging in. Appreciate you being a part of the community. It means a ton. Uh, if you haven't, um, reach out to me, and I'll, I'll definitely. If you're not in the uh, in the Discord, I'll definitely hook you up. QUBT is another long for me. Well, Sam, you put me on QUBT. I appreciate that. Cove GSN, GS, GNSF halted for days. Wow. Omar, it's a win for a win. You're good, my dude. I And that's tough, Randy. I, I really do. I, I agree with that exactly. I do. <laughs> OG roll call. Are we taking attendance? Are we taking attendance? Bobby, shit, I'm helping my pops with an account. And he has 20 UAV at like $2.50. 400%. So cool to see that percentage gain. It really is. It really is. I think that's what my TSNP is right now. And it's just like, man, just to think what that could get to. And it's already at 400%. It's like, holy smoke. Same goes with Ag Eagle. Ag Eagle is easily, in my opinion, it's going to be a thousand percent or more return. There's no question. They just keep dropping all kinds of amazing stuff. Man, guys, if you go back, if you really go look, at all the connections amazon is there it's amazon they're literally uh since or what's the one that they just acquired mica sense it is literally four minutes away from amazon's main location the headquarters it is literally four to six minutes away from there then we're in wichita ag eagles headquarters is literally eight miles away from all of the massive amazon stuff that is going in wichita you don't get that close. You A partnership does not get that close. Then if you go back and you historically look at everything that is going on with Ag Eagle, you look at all the jobs that are being applied 
or that are offered at Amazon Prime Air. They just laid off, I think it was, what, six months ago, they laid off everyone that was working in Amazon Prime Air when it came to actually developing their drone. But yet they're still going out and they're hiring people who are doing flight studies and they're doing things like that. Well, what are they working on? It would be a contracted, it would be a partnership, it would be a company they invested in, and that is Ag Eagle. It is Ag Eagle, guys. Amazon, MicaSense, Ag Eagle, $200 million to, uh, it's going to be amazing to see what they do. I'm thinking it's assembly and manufacturing. I think they're going to go get somebody. They're going to go load up on, it. there's all kinds of options when it comes to assembly and manufacturing in, in Wichita. They're going to go load up. They're going to get a bulk area. I'm sure part of that $200 million is going to go towards another acquisition in some type of drone relation. Guys, this is this is going places. This is going places. It's getting on Kramer. People are calling in and asking about it on Kramer. Now it's on his radar. It was blowing up on Twitter. Stock Twitch is talking about it. Ag Eagle, guys. Ag Eagle. And the videos from this channel will just keep on pouring out. Keep on pouring out. Tim, got to feel good to be able to say that. Yep. Yep. Next week is going to have huge gains. ENZC and OZSC are just ready to go. I got a OZSC. I didn't get a chance to get into ENZC. Hopefully one day I'll be able to make that, make it to that ranking. Sounds so cool. <laughs> You'll get there, Sam. You'll get there. Hey, Lucas, when do you think SINs will get uh, the FDA approval? I don't, I'm not sure how long that takes. I think it will definitely happen. I'm just not sure how long that process is. Um, I, I'm sure when they do, that thing's gonna that thing's gonna explode. Sam, you can be an honorary OG. Yes, he can. He's like a, he's like the you get like first team all conference and second team all conference. He's currently in the second team, working his way to the first team. Duxter, where you've been? You've been quiet. Uh, Duxter has COVID right now, and his mom has COVID, so he's dealing with some health stuff. Um, and I, I just appreciate him popping in and, and doing everything he possibly can. Uh, I told him I'd be thinking about him. Um, cool, cool kid, man. He's definitely something, someone I look up to for sure. I mean, he's been, he's investing at the age of like 15 and 16. That's phenomenal. So great kid. He's just got to get through it. I don't want that easy though. I want to earn it. <laughs> I think you're doing pretty good, man. You're 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 very active. You 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 know voice your stuff inside the Discord. You're doing awesome, man. Sam, you are in the club, like I said in the Discord. <laughs> Keep putting in the work of the Godfather, and you will come up. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I think he's doing all right. I think he's just got to get through it. Um, I, I kind of been talking to him, so yeah, he, uh, he was definitely kind of down about it and you could tell, so he'll get there. Heck yeah. He's going to be freaking loaded. He's going to be loaded. He's already talking about things that, I mean, he can, yeah, it's just phenomenal. It's going to be phenomenal. Super cool too, that he's doing that. I mean, if I would have even thought about just doing what he's doing at that age. Holy, holy cow. Holy smokes. Uh oh, taking screenshots, taking screenshots. Guys, are there any, so my penny stock, I'm going to talk about this real quick since it was requested. I'm going to kind of go through some of the penny stocks that I'm kind of, I'm not necessarily going to rank them because like it's really hard. Obviously you guys know HCMC. HCMC is going through a um, lawsuit right now. Um, they have a lawsuit against Philip Morris. I think it's every single day, more and more information is becoming relevant. Um, you know, the biggest thing that I think is it, where it changes for me from a, just a hold until then, until a decision is made or a settlement is made. It changes for me if they get 
a royalty on this. If they get a any type of royalty, it becomes a long-term play for me. I will definitely cut the million shares in half, but I'm going to stay in it if they get royalties because what that does is you got to think they'll probably get a settlement or they'll win the case outright. And if that's the case, then they're going to get they're going to get a ton of money well above more than what they're already got on revenue. And so what that does is that then builds up the company to do things. But then if they're getting a royalty on every single device that is sold in the future, they already have 14 million users, that becomes a long-term play for me because then now that changes the entire outlook of the company. So really, there's a lot riding on that. Um, so I definitely, I'm definitely, i definitely paying a lot more attention. Um, I would refer to as HCMC before as a lottery. I'm not doing that as much now with that in mind. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, the next thing is going to be uh, what else do we got in here? Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Social life is definitely number two for me. Um, you know, obviously I could flip-flop those two. WDLF is going to have a little bit longer play. Um, I like them. Blue Sphere is going to be amazing. Anytime you're talking green, clean energy resources, you're turning trash into renewable energy. Blue Sphere is going to be amazing. So that is definitely on the list. TSP is a penny stock right now. That is number one on the list. Labor Smart, absolutely really cool what they do. Nora coming in with the $2. Nora, I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't thank you enough. Cannot thank you enough. I really do appreciate it, Nora. Uh, Labor Smart, blue collar jobs that can be basically hired for a day up to a couple months. They come in, they do jobs. Obviously, we understand, you know, blue collar jobs are, are hard to come by now. Not a lot of people are interested as much in blue collar jobs. So let's say you need something that is done. You can contact Labor Smart. They'll send you out a good quality employee. So you're not having to look for them. They come to your house, come to your job, and they get the task done. Bantech obviously is a penny stock. Guys, I, I'm. this is a mini, mini ALPP if you look at it. They have subsidiaries, uh, and obviously they do construction, they do drones. They, I mean, it is a very, very small, small, small Alpine 4 Technologies. It's got the same concept. Their drone sector, you know, once the drone sector becomes extremely, extremely relevant, I think that's where Bantech really kind of starts to become a, a thing with Drone USA. So something to always keep in mind. HQGE, man, that's a monster as well. Um, you know, there's just a lot of them that I'm kind of really fascinated with right now. Uh, let's see in the TD side, Viper, Viper is going to be a, a freaking sweet, uh, penny stock. What else? I think that's all of them. I think that's all of them. I'm excited guys. And then obviously you guys are recommending a ton more, you know, Randy's throwing out easy, easy seeing, I think it is. There, there's a ton of them guys there really is there's a ton of penny stocks i'm i'm you know i'd never thought i'd get back into the o otcs like i am right now but it's extremely extremely exciting murray murray what's going on what is going on my friend tell me about ban it needs more hype yeah so let's get it let's i'll talk about that a little bit more so Bantech guys Bantech is a, a in my eyes it's not i'm not and i'm not referring to it as like the company itself is like ALP. I'm saying like the, the kind of the concept, the model is very similar. So Bantech is the head and then you have subsidiaries below it. And, and you have, uh, you know, the construction one, you have basically engineering and then you have Drone USA. And Drone USA, I think is going to do astronomical things for Bantech. And the reason is, is because the drone sector is coming and they have government entities. They're attached to a military mindset. But then they also have, you know, surveillance. They have firefighting. They just did a deal with Atlantic City's Fire and Health Department. Um, they supplied them drones. Uh, they're they're going to be doing amazing, amazing things that are just beyond, you know, it, it's just absolutely amazing. So, Bantech, by far... I refer to it as Drone USA because that's the biggest one, but obviously there's going to be other sources um, within their subsidiaries that produce money. I mean, if you look at Alpine 4 Technologies, their construction is starting to get contracts. They're starting to generate tons of revenue. So 
I, I'm sure that this once it becomes more relevant, once it becomes more prevalent, you're going to start to see Bantech really take off. Very similar to a lot of those other ones. So, let's show Lucas some love. I appreciate it, Nora. I appreciate it, Nora. All right, OGs and investing family. I got to call it a night. Do a single dad things. Have a great week. And I'll see you next Friday. Tim, take it easy, my friend. See you later. Appreciate you swinging in, OG. Randy, yeah. And Morris is making way too much money off the product. If it hits $1, I'm selling $200,000. I'm holding $300,000 long. And if they get royalty, yeah. That's my plan. I have a million in my uh, retirement side. I have two hundred fifty in my TD side, which is my like just personal trading account. Um if they hits a dollar, I'm selling all of the 250, and then if it's uh if it hits that dollar, obviously I'm gonna cut the the mill in half and then let the less the rest ride. I might do, I might do all of it except for 250 in that one. I haven't decided yet. Nora, videos are kicking arse. See ya, Tim. Have a good one. Randy, it's insane at how many great penny stocks there are and that are actually legit. I know, that's what's crazy. And you can see how, like, I would say, honestly, when I since I started doing YouTube, you can see how the waves of investing slash trading has gone. I mean, when I first started, it was very, very, like, EV, and it was very, like, uh, it was right around the time when, um, like, the very first... Um, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. The money that was coming out, um, we would get the paychecks from the government or whatever it is. Uh, so that was a big deal. So everyone was making videos on that. A lot of people were making on videos on how to become, you know, trading. And then it really turned into electrical vehicles. So a lot more people started doing the electrical vehicles and like anything that was EV related. Then it really just went into like SPAC mergers and it just went insane with SPACs. And it's still going insane with SPACs because that's the new way to enter the market. It's like, you know, screw I, you know, IPOs because the SPAC is a much easier way for the retail investor to get involved very early on. You're not getting like the sloppy leftovers and all kinds of stuff. So SPACs are the way to go. And then it was like, here comes the OTC market and everyone is like jumping on board with OTC and everyone wants to be in penny stocks. And it's like, it doesn't matter if it's a risky play. It's this is being pushed and like, holy smokes, guys. Like, it's just, it's gone in waves and it's actually been amazing to see. It's been amazing to see. Planet 13, the Drone King. What is going on? I made a lot of money on OTC. I have two. I have two. I cannot complain. I mean, TSNP, it's crazy that that's o OTC. I, I kind of heard some of the reasons why they chose that route and it makes sense. But man, I've made a ton of money off of it and I plan on making a lot more. It's tough to have those big green days and penny stocks. It is. But, you know, that's it's also, you know, very, very, I mean, a lot of people obviously say it anytime they do a video. It is very volatile. It is very, very risky. And today was a perfect example of that. I mean, the last two days for me was a perfect example of that. I had a couple penny stocks that were up just insane percentages like 70 to 110 percent but then i had some that were just dragging me down and so it really kind of leveled it off and it's like man but then that's where you get like you know your consistent ag eagles your workhorses your your consistent you know ones right there that kind of help support it and get you through those tough times um and that's why they really say you know make sure you have good good diversity and you're spread out you know you're not oversaturated in necessarily a sector like OTC or you know the drone sector or the whatever the lithium sector or whatever it may be you really want to be diverse and it, and it makes sense makes sense so do you think HCMC is a lottery ticket anymore um you know Nora my 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 thing is is it all depends on what they're going for and what they settle on and that's why it's extremely hard to say whether it's a lottery ticket because if they truly do go after a, if they go after a royalty, I don't say it's a lottery ticket anymore. I mean, it is definitely a lottery ticket in the aspect of me having a million shares of it. And if it hits a dollar, that's a lottery win. Like that's massive. But my entire mindset changed 
when I saw it actually someone and it was not a credible source I put it in the video because it was definitely something I've been thinking about but if they get a royalty from it that changes the entire thing because that is revenue that is going to be consistently driven in because of how big Philip Morris is and how, and they already they just put an article out that said they already have like two other models of the of the exact same thing that is being patent infringed on so I, I'm telling you, it, it changed my mind on it from being a true lottery, like hopefully this hits and maybe we'll make some money to, hey, if this does get a settlement for not only $1 billion, but then they also get the royalty of 10 to 12%, man, that changed everything for me. That changed everything for me. I'd love to see the new design on the t-shirt too. Yeah, I'm going to get there. I'm definitely going to get there. Uh, this has been an extremely, extremely busy couple of weeks so i'm definitely trying to i'll work on that love in the chat friday was already my favorite day of the week now it's even better let's go you not thought of a couple pharma otc plays luke nah, i haven't really got into too many of them right now um it's not that i don't want to it's just like i said i'm very like I'm just so strapped with everything right now, and I'm, I'm focusing on trying to get some of these drone stocks out there. Um, I still have a couple more penny stocks I'm looking to put out in videos. Uh, definitely going to try to get Labor Smart video out there. I want to cover Ag Eagle in a couple videos and kind of talk about my thoughts on them uh, in the current state. I do want to do another Dragonfly video. I want to do another Drone Delivery Canada video. It's like, man, I wish I had more time in the day, but I don't because I... I work, then I come home, and it's like so much going on. But I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to try to start, you know, getting back in the grind, video every single day except for the weekend. Um, so, yeah. Love to see you all making money like this. Do you see it trend following all year? I think, it. you know, if you do the research, you put in the time, you put in the effort, um, you're going to make money in the market, even when you have, you know, bad scenarios. Um, it all depends on how you're invested and what you're invested in and, and like how well diverse you are. Like a lot of people freak out when they see that I have 41 stocks. Um, and they're like, man, that's too many. You should only be in this many. Well, and then I would turn around and show them that I'm up 191% in a month's time. Um, and, and so it really kind of just depends. Do I think we're going to have a big pullback? At some point, yes, we will. Um, I mean, that's just how the market works. That's how it functions. And, and yeah, I think we'll have a pullback. I mean, we're at 31,000 in the Dow. Um, we're pushing 32,000, I believe, except for, I, I can't remember what the market finished out today. But, guys, we're hitting some highs. Bitcoin is running rampant. It's doing amazing things. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think we're due for a pullback at some point. It just depends on how much. Uh, it, it really does. It really does. If that vape shops was closer, I'd drive by and check it out since it's down here in Florida. Yeah, I think their grocery, uh, yeah, their vape shops are down there. I think they have a grocery store down there. I know they have multiple grocery stores, but I think it's somewhere near you, Nora. I just can't remember where it's at. I see people talking about a crash again. Yeah, I mean, it's something to talk about. Um, I, I think at some point, like I said, we're definitely probably going to have a pullback. It's just naturally how the market is, but it's just when and how much. JM, what's going on, bro? You got over a hundred stocks. Yeah, I mean, it it really it, it's it's what you're comfortable with. It's it's what you're comfortable doing, um, and, and really just you know being diverse and you know you don't want it to make everything an eighty percent position. Um, I've talked about this multiple times, you know, with Miguel, you know, and he, he says it just as much. You don't, you can't have everything at 80%. You know, you have to be, you know, have certain ones that you have a lot more in, but you also have to make sure that you have support and, and, you know, I feel comfortable enough to have those. So that's definitely, definitely, uh, uh, Devin in portfolio. That makes sense. Ooh, that's paying yourself back, man. That's awesome. Cha-ching. That's awesome. 
stay cash heavy and get some crypto to ride the possible crash out, but I'm not worried. I'm not either. I typically try to, you know, if you can, you can't always anticipate how big or when it's truly, truly going to happen. I mean, some people try to, um, I always try to have some cash on hand in case that happens, but when, when the big tank happens, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to really collect everything that you want. But, you know, that is also how I, I, I built a lot of my, um, portfolio was, you know, on the very bottoms of March when we were hitting some very, very lows, uh, due to the, the pandemic. I have about 30 stocks. That's awesome, Sam. That's awesome. What'd you say your percentage was for CCIV, Sam? <coughs> You guys are amazing. Friday night. Hopefully everybody's having a great Friday night. Hopefully everybody's doing good, doing good. I for sure, for sure see it coming or continuing all year and then some, but not for all sectors. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I think um, I think certain things are going to start to change a little bit. Uh, I think obviously the EV sector is going to continue to go. I think we have yet to really see um, you know, EVs as a whole, uh, really generate a ton, ton of revenue outside of like Tesla and maybe a few others. But, you know, I think EVs will continue. Um, obviously the charging station companies are going to start to generate a lot more revenue because a lot more of their charging stations are going to get out. Um, other companies are going to start manufacturing vehicles here probably in the next year. Um, and so you're really going to start to see a lot more revenue. And so the anticipation is going to build. Uh, a lot of people are going to get more involved. The drone sector, guys, is going to become very, very relevant this year. It's going to be amazing to see where from now until December of obviously 2021, where we're going to be at with drones. I mean, maybe the FAA does roll out the entire playbook in the summer. And by November, drones are delivering packages everywhere. It's just going to be kind of an excitement. You're going to see a lot of shakeup, I think. I think you're going to see a lot of companies kind of come together um, obviously you have the major players, you have Amazon, Google, you have Walmart, you have UPS. I mean, there's a ton. So it's just going to be amazing to see. I think there is a ton of sectors that are going to benefit. Um, obviously solar and, uh, all the green energy sectors. So yeah, I think there's a ton. It's good to diversify. I just looked up the most reliable 10 stocks in 10 sectors. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm not sitting on any cash, but I'm thinking about working on that at some point right now. I'm just want my money working for me. It makes sense. It does. You know, I'm I'm very strapped right now. I have, you know, some, but not enough to really make, you know, do damaging moves or anything, exciting moves. But, you know, I always have some just to, to be there just to be safe. Got a great lesson on taking profits and cutting losses while day trading this week. Man, that was rough. Rookie mistake, but I'm learning though. That's what it's about, Randy. That's what it's about. It is a rough game at times. It is definitely a rough game. You're up 100% in January. That's awesome, Sam. That is absolutely awesome. With the FAA announcement mid-March, do you think drone stocks will boom around then? If that if they do make that massive announcement, um, I, I would have, yeah, most definitely. I think that's going to be the biggest game changer is when the FAA literally rolls out the entire like approval process. Um, basically they say, Hey, here's what you can do, what you can't do. Um, I think that's, what's going to be the most exciting. And I think that's when you're going to see all these drone stocks really just start to take off. I think that's just, I, th I think you're, I just think, I think that there's so much that it is when it comes to to drones in themselves. I mean, there's so many good companies out there that just don't have the capital to really be um, like on anyone's radar right now. And a lot of them aren't public. I mean, a perfect example is like Bantech. Like I didn't know anything about Bantech. Truthfully, it's not even Bantech. It's the subsidiary is Drone USA. I didn't know anything about Drone USA until the other day. It got brought to my attention. I went and did the research. I put a video out on it and it's like, man, you know, if this company gets one acquired or if this company really does start to develop a great game plan 
and they get you know approvals they start getting partnerships maybe they sign a government contract it's going to be phenomenal i mean you know i put out a video on drone uh what was it um uh global uav technologies um they had a system in place for lidar it was absolutely phenomenal but then um you know dragonfly another major drone company came in and swooped up that entire you know entire thing took the lidar program took basically everything they were using and and swooped it up so those things can happen any times i think drone delivery canada or uh, excuse me global uav technologies has an amazing helicopter drone and that could be used for a government entity i just think there's a lot out there guys um that really from a drone perspective is just going to be phenomenal and then Alpine 4 Technologies, Beast, Ag Eagle, Beast, Dragonfly, Beast, Workhorse, Beast. I mean, there's monsters out there. Percent on my profile holding on CC, CCIV, one account I have 89% and 45% of my fidelity. Okay. I still want a drone to play with. I need to make it happen. Yeah, I do too, Nora. I just, man... I'd be scared I'd lose it. Of CCIV, I don't work out. I'm going down big time. But if it goes through, bro, I know I will retire rich. That's awesome, my friend. JM Cole, Microvision is absolutely flying the last few weeks because of LiDAR. Had a healthy correction this week. Yeah, that, that's one thing I'm going to start paying a little bit more attention to is the LiDAR area. Um, the reason is, is because I think it's going to be incorporated into a lot more of the drone delivery, package delivery, but also EVs and things like that. So... LiDAR is definitely something I'm going to start paying more attention to. It's so funny how many newbies there are. All of a sudden, my employees are Wolf of Wall Street because they bought Dogecoin. It's awesome, Randy. Yeah, you know, I was uh, talking about this the other day. So, um, you know, I'm by no means an expert on anything stock related. Um, and it's funny to me, like I got a YouTube channel and like I told you guys, I was at 3,200 subs. Um, I do, anytime I create a video, I shred it, I spread it across my social media platforms. And it, I spread it across Facebook. I don't use Facebook at all. Um, you know, my wife tags me in pictures and things like that. But obviously you can share, um, you know, your videos and your comments from Instagram and it transfers it over to Facebook. And that's what I do. Um, but I get a lot of people that reach out from like high school and from college and they're like, Hey, you remember me? And it's like, yeah, you were that guy that was a a hole to me, or you, you were that chick that thought you were too cool. And you're like, and now you want advice. And it's like, Hmm, I remember. But yeah, there's a lot of new people getting into the stocks for sure. Do you know any suppliers of tech for these drone companies sell the shovel to the gold miner and then all that? Um, you know, a lot of them are doing it themselves, JM. I mean, if you look at Ag Eagle, for example, uh, a lot of them are, I mean, and especially with the new executive order, uh, a lot of those parts have to be done in the United States. So a lot of these drone companies are doing everything in-house, um, specifically like an Ag Eagle. Like they're doing all the parts, everything that goes inside of them. Um, and, and so it's all being developed. Um, you know, there's a good company out there when it comes to engineering, um, and that's uh, Ascend Engineering. They're not a public company yet. I talked to uh, the CEO. I'm, I'm planning on having an interview with him, and his name's Andrew Wilkins. Um, I, I talked to him on the side. He's an absolute phenomenal dude. The the team is amazing. Um, I, I, guarantee, I guarantee you they're working night in, night out, and, and they're doing amazing things. So I'm going to definitely have an interview with, uh, with Andrew. Um, I'm definitely, I've been talking to, um, I've been talking to Ryan Walsh, the CEO of Valkyrie. Uh, I definitely plan on having another interview with him. Um, at some point I want to have another interview with, uh, Ian Anais, the CEO of, um, of Zing. Um, you know, I've, I've been reaching out to Ag Eagle. I don't think they're going to do an interview because of the, in non-disclosure agreement, I'm surprised that Matt Martin even did a podcast. Um, you know, I'm going to reach out to Cameron Shell, the CEO of Dragonfly. I've been talking to him on the side, so hopefully we can set something up. Uh, but with them going to uh, the NASDAQ, it might be kind of hard. They might have to fill out a form. But, 
you know, there's a, there's a lot of things I have in, in place. Um, there's a lot of things that I'm working on and I just got to get, you know, days to do it. A lot of them don't do it on the weekend and that's when I'm mostly available to, to do some of this stuff. So, um, yeah, we're, we got some things kind of in, in the works. Uh, I just got to, got to execute. I'm probably going to get a lot of this planned out in March. Um, I'm going to take a vacation in March. Uh, I think it's like the second or third week in March and I'm probably going to step away from YouTube for like five days. Um, and then just let it kind of clean out and then come back with a fury, do a bunch of interviews, do a bunch of videos and just get back into it. But I plan on in a, in a, in March taking kind of like a week away from, from YouTube. Uh, let's see, let's get back into it. D F L Y dragonfly monster. Marcus, what is going on? My friend, appreciate you swinging in. What do you think about Z N T E? Are you invested in? Um, I'm not invested into it yet. I do think, in you know, I, I probably eventually some point will. I do think air taxis are going to be something that is going to be very, very, you know, important. And obviously with them um, getting involved with the air taxis, whichever one they end up choosing, I think that that will be significant. Um, you know, I, I do intend to invest into eHang too. Obviously, they're very involved with air taxis. And, and so that's something that I'm definitely going to be, you know, looking to get into definitely here in the near future. I'm in Doge, just $300 on it. Yeah, I, I know Nora was too, but I think she took her profits and, and put it back into, uh, or invest, not invested. She uh, donated it to a, a dog place. Good business model, design your own tech. Yeah, that's a that's a big thing. That's a big thing for sure. Um, and, and I think that that really kind of speaks about the drone sector because of the executive order. I mean, I'm sure a lot of them were going overseas to like China and getting a lot of those parts. But now that a lot of has has to be manufactured within the United States and a lot of those parts have to be manufactured in the United States, I think it's going to really kind of open the doors to some of these, you know, drone companies for that reason because maybe they don't necessarily create the drone, but they supply the parts and the innards and things like that. So that's that's something also to think about. You have AK on ZNT. That's awesome. Oh, 6 6k. Gotcha. I sold and bought some RTP. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so too. Robert, what's going on, my friend? Appreciate you swinging in. Who do you think UAV is partnered with? Pure speculation, obviously. Kramer put UAVs on the map today. Uh, it's Amazon. I, I'm, I, I believe it, it's Amazon. I'm not even gonna say it's speculation anymore. I'm pretty. I'm, I'm like 98% sure it's Amazon. I, I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. My sense is like six to eight minutes away from the headquarters of Amazon. Um, you know, obviously Ag Eagle is in Wichita. It is four miles away from, you know, the entire setup that Amazon has in Wichita. Um, I just, you know, the former Micah Sense, uh, co-founder and CEO, the former CEO is now working at a major position in Amazon prime air. Um, there's just so many connections, uh, a long time ago, there was, a picture taken and it is Jeff Bezos off to the side watching drones do a package delivery and it, it was like a senior major person from Amazon and it was Brent Chilcott and they were all discussing drones um, I mean there's so many pieces of evidence out there you know Amazon lays off basically its entire workforce when it comes to manufacturing drones of their Amazon Prime Air but yet they're still you know, working in Amazon Prime Air and they still are, you know, functioning the 30 minute delivery aspect. They're still hiring for Amazon Prime Air from a drone perspective. Obviously, I understand Amazon Prime Air is bigger because you have the planes, but they're still hiring for the drone perspective. Um, and, and they talk about a partnership and being able to work with a partnership. Guys, I'm pretty sure, uh, about a 98% sure that it's Amazon. I would honestly be in shock and awe if it wasn't. Like, I would literally just be blown away. Blown away if it wasn't. Canoe has a good design for a minivan. I'd be, in, you know, I'm interested to see how that pans out. I'm interested to see how Canoe pans out. At one point, I was invested. I was invested. I, I got a decent return and sold all of it to, to move it to other things. But I'm definitely interested. Apple only recently stopped using dunk cameras. Okay. 
Yeah, I feel the same. Oh, Sony cameras. I got you. I got you. Too many execs going back and forth between Amazon, Micah Sense, and Ag Eagle. That too. I mean, it, man, it's just, it's insane. It's insane. Uh, I think there's a lot, there's so many more ties, guys. Like, um, it's just, it's extremely, extremely, like, amazing to see the due diligence that has been done. Um, uh, there's a couple people on Twitter that I talk to on a regular basis. Um, and it's just amazing to see the due diligence that was done for this entire mindset, this entire concept. Um, I mean, it's just, it's strategic. I mean, it really is. If you think about it, Amazon is probably, you know, advising some things when it comes to, you know, hey, this is probably what you should do. This is who you should acquire. This is some things to think about um, in order to keep this, you know, job going. That Micasense acquisition was absolutely tremendous. I mean, their sensors, their cameras are next level. They do a ton of stuff, not only for the agriculture, but in the in the statement that was put out why the acquisition was done, you know, obviously Michael Droz is talking about package delivery. So I think there's just so much, so much that is going into it that it just, like I said, the dots are just literally starting to become concrete. Digibyte is an interesting play as part of humble blockchain investments. I do. I think so too. I think so too. I think that that could potentially be an acquisition or a very, very deep uh, partnership. Kale, I'm wondering if there's a quick and reliable way to get up-to-date info on HCMC case in the, on the day of court. I worry a lot of people may take advantage to spread fall news. Yeah, you know, a lot of the time it's uh, you buy the hype, sell the news. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that happens, Kale. Do you believe any Amazon shows up on earnings reports? Um, you know, with the non-disclosure, um, you know, I don't think it'll actually say, um, I know for a fact that the mica sense probably won't be on this one. Um, the mic, like the mica sense revenue won't be on this one. Um, but it would be interesting to see because I know from the last quarterly earnings, they said that, um, this said e-commerce was going to continue to make investments. So like orders, and I'm thinking that there could be another big order on this one. And if that's the case, um, yeah, I, I mean, when you're talking massive size, these guys, like, they're doing something. So I'm pretty sure that it's Amazon for sure. That would be awesome. Maybe Kathy would take on ARKX. Well, and, and guys, you know, that's another reason why I'm pretty sure it popped the other day the way it did. Um, because, you know, Kathy Wood came out and immediately when she was talking about ARKX, she jumped right in and was talking about, you know, wanting to add drones to to that ETF. Um, and I think that that's significant. I think, you know, there's some major drone companies out there. And you got to think she already has Workhorse involved with ARKQ. So is she going to add workhorse to two ETFs? I don't think so. So then you really got to sit down and you got to start to evaluate what, you know, she's very creative. She's very, her ingenuity for adding very up and coming companies is, is like no other. And there's a reason why she's been so successful. So I don't think she just goes out and gets like a Lockheed Martin. I don't think she just goes out and gets a Boeing. I don't think she just goes out and gets like the big names. I think she goes out and actually gets like E Hang. She goes out and gets Ag Eagle and Dragonfly and ALPP. And the reason I say those is because each one of those companies offers more, offers more than just the drone itself. And that's what's amazing. ALPP is way more than just a drone, but that is a very significant piece. Dragonfly offers more than just the drone in the pandemic and a lot of other things, but is very heavily relied upon and is known for the drone. Ag Eagle is obviously very drone driven, but has a ton of sectors, hemp, agriculture, package delivery, manufacturing and assembly. Um, I do think at some point, and maybe with this 200 million, we see a military slash government entity come involved with it. So you're really talking a lot of things that these companies are doing besides the drone even though it's very evolved around or revolved around the drone. So that's something to think about too. Yeah, technically speaking, this cup and handle is huge and we're ready to see $25, 37 to 55 in two months over at Stockwitz. Yeah, you know, I saw that article. I can't remember who wrote it. Um, 
I do. I, I, I envision $25. Um, I was calling $25 in like May or April. Um, I think that just with the way we're going, um, with the $200 million, I think, you know, obviously we have quarterly earnings coming up. Um, I envision those being, you know, okay. I don't think they're going to be the greatest, but I don't think they're going to be terrible. Um, I think we're actually going to be kind of surprised. Um, and so I could see that being a very positive catalyst. At some point, we're going to see another acquisition or that money going towards something. You don't just go get $200 million and sit on it. You have zero long-term debt. They, they have a an intention to do that. So I, I'm sure at some point we're going to hear that come out, especially if the FAA is going to really start to unravel the playbook and then they're going to be able to start doing what they're meant to do. I just think we're going to we're going to start to see some things really develop. So I do definitely see $25. Um, when the 37 to 55 happens, it really kind of depends. I think the more and more attention that gets involved with this, um, I, I think that's where it's really going to be driven up in price. I mean, look at look at the how Workhorse really kind of responded as of late. We're getting closer and closer to the USPS contract announcement. So the stock price is going up to really correlate with that. And so I think the closer and closer we get to like the summer and maybe into the fall time when really a lot of things are going to start to come out, I, I see the stock price, you know, reacting the same way it would as like a workhorse did. I noticed everyone commenting is positive and actually nice. Good for to see for a change. You know, Evan, that's what I, tr I try to do. Um, you know, in some of my comments on the actual channel itself, um, you know, I, I delete them if they're terrible. Um, that's just my new thing. If, if it's a negative comment, um, I, I don't need it on there and I just delete it. So, um, you know, there's some that YouTube handles for me. Um, if they're like kind of like going off the wall with something or they say something that's just dumb, um, YouTube handles it for me and just removes it automatically. But for the most part, if it's something that's like attacking or, you know, they're acting keyboard warrior ish, uh, I just go ahead and delete it. it. It doesn't need to be there. So, but this group right here, this group right here, Evan is amazing. The discord, most of these people are in the discord, very positive and, and it's, you know, we work as a team. I refer to it as a family. Um, it's, it's amazing to be a part of. And, you know, I was just glad I was able to bring everyone together and, and just keep this thing growing. Um, cause it's, it's what it's about is you guys. Um, and, and, you know, I'm just here to basically be the puppet. Kathy is more future growth prospect portfolio. And I agree. I agree, Robert, for sure. You're saying $45, Sam. Yeah, I think, I don't think that that's out of the realm. You know, if I think if, and, and that's what's going to be crazy, what, no matter what they announce, whoever it is, you know, if it is Amazon, I think it breaks the stock. I think it breaks the stock. I mean, the thing would not be able to hold on going in the upward direction. Um, you know, if they, if they announce it's Amazon, I envision $100 immediately, immediately. And then the, the sky's the limit. You know, that, that gentleman that's had the price target out for however long has it at like $450. I think that guy knows something. I think that guy knows something. You just don't throw out a random number like that and just, I, I mean, it's crazy. Embrace the haters. Yes, you do. They're hating for a reason, and that's how I view it, Nora. They're hating on you for a reason. Because they don't know me personally. 68 by the end of the year. I think that could happen. I think that could happen. It's really hard to predict. It's really hard to predict with uh, with Ag Eagle. And the reason is because of the non-disclosure. It's very hard. Just very similar to like Workhorse. You know, Workhorse has a non-disclosure in place with the USPS. And it's just extremely hard to predict the price when you don't know what is really hiding behind that non-disclosure agreement. So I, I mean, I could tell you guys it could be $50 and then realistically it could end up being like $150. It's just, it, those are, t those are hard. Those are hard. We figured that the manufacturing company is needed and most likely in the next acquisition. I, I think it is. I really do. Um, I'd have to agree with you. Um, I think manufacturing is definitely going to be needed because of when you put it in a big picture, you know, I think we've, we've talked quite a bit. They're going to have to ramp it up and they're going to have to provide a ton of drones 
to not only this major e-commerce, but more people because more people are going to become customers and they're going to have to be able to fulfill those orders. Um, and so, yeah, you're definitely going to need a bigger, not even necessarily a bigger facility. You're just going to need more employees. But I also think if you go out and get a major acquisition uh, of a company that is assembling and manufacturing and you get those workers already with that deal, um, I think that just is amazing because then you're really taking it to the next level. Cause I don't, I don't think Dragonfly has a massive production. Um, I don't think that they have a ton of employees, and so that's something that they would take on, uh, you know, above them. I don't really know how many employees Impossible Aerospace had. I don't know how many employees Vayu had. Um, and so that if they do that, I think that's where they continue to be the the leader in this drone, you know, bubble that I'm referring to as, and how they stay on top versus those other competitors. Um, they go out and get a major acquisition in, I mean, I think they're already ahead in some aspects because of the, the strategic partnerships that they have. Um, and then obviously we have that e-commerce just sitting there. <clears throat> Austin, sorry, I just joined. Have you discussed the significance of the Valkyrie delivery system component? That is a linchpin to me. I have to agree, Austin, no question. And that's another thing too that puts them ahead of, of everybody. And that's why they'll always be my number one is because you know that is always right there and and we we don't even necessarily know yet what valkyrie is is selling the box for at least i haven't seen and we don't know how many they've sold we don't know how many they've been made like obviously we know that's a two-year contract with ag eagle we don't know how many have been manufactured that's those are another thing to think about and the patents that they have on them you know, nobody else is going to really be able to recreate that pa that box, that receptacle. So, man, that that's just monstrous right there. I mean, you you nailed it right there, Austin. Either manufacturing parts or 3D printed parts for UAVS acquisition. Yeah, that's another thing I didn't even think about. You know, that that'd be pretty sweet too, 3D printing for sure. Austin, they've agreed to manufacturing Valkyrie's mailbox too, right? Yeah, yeah, they have. Yep. That's a lot of sheet metal production. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's what's going to be interesting. Micah Sense is huge by itself. Those sensors, holy crap. Man, those things are next level. And they're like, what, $10,000 to $12,000 a piece? I mean, and everything that they do everything that they do like it was over my head like i understood some of it but i started understanding that the, it judges like windage it, it it scans a lot of things like from an agriculture standpoint man it was just phenomenal it, it talked about areas in which needed water um it was studying like different types of grass like just alone in the ag aspect was beyond mind-blowing to me but then Michael Droz came out and was like, yeah, we're going to use it for package delivery and we're going to use it in this manner. And it's just like, Pow. what is going on? Can you talk about what Google does with drones different from everyone else or how they may compete with them? now and in the future so one thing to remember with google is they have i think it was called project x and they really don't put out a ton of information on it they like in all honesty they don't put a ton out um and i think that's the reason why it's titled project x basically it's like an underground project i know a lot of what they're working on at least to my knowledge is taking like mapping to another level um, obviously they have Google maps. Um, it would be a way for them to really take that to another level. Um, but I could see them getting involved with package delivery as well. I, I mean, I think there's a lot that Google is going to be doing with the drones. I just think it's very hard to find a ton of information because it is so classified. Like, I mean, they call it project X and like, I just, I've looked stuff up. It's been older, um, like five to even years beyond that. So it's been it's just been hard to find information on it. I mean, I th I th I think that you know when you start thinking about the possibilities of what drones do, um, and how Google can imply those to a lot of what they're involved with, I think that's where we got to start kind of like 
what would they use them specifically for? Um, and so, you know, I think that there's a lot that they can do. It's just, it's just, there's not a ton of information out. Every time UABS goes up, it makes big green candles. So with an Amazon contract, I see it going up $12 on the first day of news. That'd be phenomenal. That'd be amazing. If not higher. Yeah, I think, I think it would break the stock. I mean, it, it's just, I, I just don't understand. I mean, I what I do understand is that drones are coming. The sector as a whole is coming. Like, it was in a Super Bowl commercial for a company that has nothing to do with drones. Um, I mean, as at least to my knowledge, I don't think that they have anything to relate it to drones. But it was talking about package delivery. I mean, this is happening. This is something that people are working on every single day. Massive companies are putting in their own due diligence on perfecting the drone. And the reason is because it's a cheaper cost. It's a way to really put the pers- the person, the individual, the human being at less risk when it comes to certain tasks. Um, it's putting a drone in, in there in place. And, it, you know, it's reducing insurance. You know, you have all these drivers out on the road uh, from a package delivery standpoint. You're reducing some of them because... You know, it, it, you're not necessarily going to need them to do certain things like a 30 minute quick delivery. I just think that there's a lot of benefits. And I think the more and more people become aware, like they did the EV sector, I think that's when drones really start to take off and companies like Ag Eagle become relevant. Because here's the thing Ag Eagle is traded on the American. So they can be talked about on CNBC, they can be talked about on Fox Business. I mean, these are things that can be talked about and they're just not chose to be talked about. Like it took Kramer to talk about it because someone called in and asked him about it. And he really kind of, he was like, yeah, I like the direction. It's a drone company, but then he blows it off and talks about Honeywell or something. And it's like, what? The call was and the question was about UAVS. It's just the fact that you don't know, you don't know what it's about. You don't even know necessarily what it is. You just, someone popped in your ear and said drone company. And that's like what you said. Like Honeywell is... I guess they're in drones, but are they doing everything Ag Eagle's doing? No. Every time you, uh, yeah, we, uh, if not higher, Sam, I'm going to make it for sure. Are there any details on the ALPP and Tesla deal yet? Uh, I haven't seen any. Um, I haven't seen anything like leaked yet either. I, I do believe more and more that the, the Tesla deal is more driven towards their vehicle stuff. Um, and, and we'll go to their website real quick. I do think it's more vehicle driven though. I don't think it's necessarily, um, drone related. So this is the new website. They updated it. A4 technology, manufacturing service, construction service, corporate. Maybe it was under this. No, that's for their. Can't remember which one the car is, but this is a, so this is the answer. Um, who did ask this earlier? Evan, here's a, here's a kind of the answer. So quality circuit assembly from Alpine Ford technologies. That's what they do. Um, so they actually build the innards of basically drones and, and all the specs and things like that that go inside of that. So ideally, that's who's going to be building a lot of the innards to their drones is going to be this quality circuit assembly, which is a subsidiary to Alpine Ford Technologies. So they're going to use like in-house. Uh, I wish I could find. I wish I could find the car one that they had, but I'm thinking. I'm thinking that it's uh, going to be either like the sheet metal or something like that. And that's where the deal with uh, Tesla is going to come in at. But no, I didn't see any official announcement. I used to be an Amazon driver in the UK in rural, narrow, single lane roads. And it can be pretty dangerous. Drones would be amazing in areas like that. Yeah, and I know a lot of testing has been done over there. Um, I know a lot of testing has been done in like out outside areas of London and like out in the you know 
big pastures over there in the UK, um, you know, because the testing has been a little bit more convenient over there. There's not as restrictive rules, at least to my understanding. So I know a lot of testing has been done from drone perspective. That's really where a lot of the rumors with uh, Ag Eagle and Amazon came from was because they were doing a lot of testing as a combined group over there. That's awesome. You can't tell me Jim Cramer doesn't give priority to stocks he is personally invested in. You know, I think that, but then I also think that um, he has, he short stuff. And I think that, I think that that's something to, I mean, if he doesn't care about it, he's not going to, like you said, he's not, if he's not invested in, he's not going to take the time to really talk about it. And I think that that was the situation. Like someone called in, asked about a new stock and he was like, yeah, it's a drone company. And he, he seemed positive. I mean, he did seem positive about it until then he was like, it's Honeywell. And then he's like, it's a speculation. I mean, okay. How do you like Innoviz? Um, I think it's going to be good. Um, I'm not invested in it. Um, I've seen a lot of people talk about it. Uh, you know, I think if it gets enough hype and it gets enough people involved with it, I think it'll definitely do some stuff. But I myself am not into it right now. Um, it, it's one that I have on the watch list, but it's kind of like a little bit lower down, Randy. I would take his advice like a grain of salt. That's what a lot of people say, Nora. Grain of salt. I do like his setup. I would be interested to see who takes over his show after he goes. Um, and if they change, like, the view. Um, I would like to see someone new, like, innovative, really talk about, like, new up-and-coming things. Like, get someone from ARC to go on there and talk about all the creative stuff. I think that would... You know, you're going to have to eventually change change how you present things because yes people are very interested in stocks and ceos and things like that but people want to know about new up and coming like ideas and companies and and so i think at some point like fox business and cnbc who do these shows like they're gonna have to change like how they do presentations and things to get like a younger group of people to watch your shows kramer's a boomer in cnbc traditional media is quickly being taken over by people like you and other YouTube personalities embrace it. Most definitely, Austin. Most definitely. Um, that's a big reason why I wanted to do YouTube. Um, you know, I, I I have, you know, at, at work I have CNBC on when I'm, I'm in the control center and working like inside the building. Um, and I have CNBC on. But there's certain things that I am very drawn off by. And it's like I don't care about that. Um, you know, like. The other day, there was a massive argument when they were talking, you know, GameStop was a big thing. You know, the GameStop thing is, it, you know, it happened for a reason, but I feel like they continue to add fuel to the fire. They continue to just talk about it and beat it and beat it and beat it. And like, it's like, man, like, I don't care about it anymore. Like, I'm moving on. And it's like they wanted to keep bringing it up because it was something to talk about. And, and that's, that was annoying to me. I hope I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to get out there, Austin. I'm trying to become a, a face. I'm trying to become a positive influence. Um, and that that's that's my that's my goal. Walgreens and CVS have been looking for a drone company to deliver medicine to those who can't come in a store. Kind of funny that Amazon is taking that route as well. I agree, Robert. I, I agree too. And I do think at some point you could see a partnership with like an Ag Eagle, an Alpine 4, Dragonfly maybe even. Because Dragonfly is really, really pushing that medical aspect. Um, you know, with a CVS or a Walgreens, it would be very interesting to see, um, how that plays out. Obviously if, if Amazon really is pushing, you know, the, that, that MO, it's gotta be Ag Eagle then. Um, so I would like to see some of these other companies maybe do something like that as well. Drones will be used for finding lost hitchhikers, travelers, etc. That's a big, um, that's a big uh, message that Bantech puts out. Bantech really talks about, you know, their drones that they create, um, being able to find people lost at sea, uh, finding people in the woods, um, using certain things to, to do that. So, yeah, and fighting forest fires. All they have to do is drop in um, and, and drop these, like, pill balls that fall in and they eliminate the fire. So you're not having planes to fly over and drop, you know, the powder or actual physical firefighters going in and trying to fight these fires. 
You can have an array of drones go in there and do all kinds of things. It will be amazing. You know these channels are going to have to make their crew how they deliver information along younger. I agree. I agree, and I think that's why, you know, like um, like Austin just said, that's why YouTube is, is a new wave. Like, you know, I can present the information on a certain company to you in 20 to 25 minutes if I choose that to be that long. Most of the time it's 15 to 20, and you're getting what you would, would choose to, to hear. I know t everyone does not watch every video because it keeps track of that. The The average view time is about eight minutes. Um, but then you can go click on someone else's video and get the same information on the company, but get maybe a little bit more information or a different perspective. That's what's unique about YouTube is if the stock is hot, you can get a ton of different opinions, a ton of different viewpoints. Um, and really, that's how you can develop your own you know, thoughts and opinions on that stock. Then you can really sit down and, and do your research by going to Google or going to a Weeble or going to, you know, a Yahoo Finance and typing in and looking up news articles and looking up, you know, the financial aspects of the company. And within, you know, an hour to two hours of really putting in the time, you know, as much as uh, about the company as anybody else. That's what's amazing about it. You don't have to sit down and, and look at a newspaper or sit down and watch CNBC or Fox Business and hope that you're your company's talked about or you can find it in the newspaper like you can get the information immediately <laughs> just talk about crypto I wish I knew so much about crypto um, you know I'm invested but I am nowhere close to even like being fluid in in crypto by no means I'm a big fan of Josh Answers and the Trading Fraternity. I love to see him on CNBC. Shout out to the Colt. That's awesome. That's awesome. I listen to him every day. Josh is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I love Walgreens as a stock. They have new female CEO, and it looks like they'll be doing great things. A good rebound stock for sure. Yep. Yeah, and they pay a dividend. I watch Lucas's videos all the way through, so he gets the ad revenue. Thanks, Nora. I appreciate it. Daniel, what's going on, my friend? Sounds like 6G. Well, guys, we've been going for two hours and 12 minutes. I'm going to wrap this bad boy up. It is 11.05 my time. I got to get up early to take the two littles uh, to the vet. And then uh, my family is coming over. Um, we're going to have, um, I think my wife is making chili. And we're going to be doing some uh, kind of just hanging out with the family. And uh, that's typically what I try to do on the weekends is spend a lot of time with family. Try to put the phone away. Um, as much as possible, even though, you know, stuff happens, uh, research and all that stuff still has to continue. But I try to put the phone down and, um, try to just spend it with family. Um, that's what I try to do. So, uh, that's my plan for the weekend. It's going to be very, very cold where I live. So I plan on staying indoors and, uh, trying to just <laughs> stay warm, but I appreciate every single one of you guys. I really do. I enjoy the heck out of Fridays because of this. I absolutely love, absolutely love um, live streams, guys. I love providing content to you guys. I love putting out videos. It's an excitement. I, I literally look forward to it every single day um, and getting positive comments. The Discord is just phenomenal. Uh, I love being in, in the Discords. Um, and so I really, truly, can't, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, you guys are phenomenal. I, and, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. You really are. You are what helped drive this channel. You are the channel. I'm literally just the person who puts the videos out and you guys, you know, make it happen for me. So I, I thank you so much. I hope every single one of you guys have a phenomenal weekend. Stay safe. Uh, and enjoy it. Spend time with friends. Spend time with family. Um, and, and, you know, get caught up on, on things. Obviously, it's a three-day weekend. The stock market is closed on Monday here. Um, and so really just take some time to relax. Do some research if you want to. Put in the due diligence. And let's get, let's get after it on Tuesday. Guys, I'm going to drop a video just like normal on Monday. Um, I can't, I haven't decided what it's going to be on yet because the market is going to be closed. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get after it, guys. We'll get after it. I hope every single one of you guys have a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend. Phenomenal weekend. And if you haven't, uh, join the Discord, guys. Join the Discord. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Um, I, I talk to every single person. And, and so I appreciate you guys so much so much. As always, have a good weekend.